weight loss drugs, which have seen a wild ride over the past few months. In fact, Novo Nordisk's share price has soared more than 190% since May 2020, when it said its diabetes treatment showed superior sustained weight loss. Its Wagovi obesity drug has since shot to fame, rolling out in the US and Europe in earnest this year. Speaking to CNBC in November, the CFO put anti-obesity drugs at the heart of Novo's expansion plans. We are in a sweet spot uh, to, uh, to our comment. Uh, growing 33% in, uh, in the pharmaceutical sector is, is, is uh, leading in, uh, on a global scale. And uh, we can only grow by this pace uh, based, based on our innovative products, it, both in diabetes and, and obesity care. Meanwhile, Eli Lilly and its newly approved drugs have boosted competition in the fledgling market. CEO David Ricks told CNBC where they fit into the firm's strategy. It's obviously a very large potential market. Um, that has to be proven out with uh, the leaders now. Um, I would just point out that, um, you know, probably on the one hand, if you're running a major pharmaceutical ca company, you have to pay attention to this category, and it's, you know, probably a malpractice not to consider investing in obesity given the opportunity ahead. On the other hand, I think uh, Lilly is a leader here, and uh, we, we plan to make it hard to be caught. I think we've really gone after this. And of course, competition's good, we're all for that, but Lilly aims to invest to win here. Now, off the back of that growth, Novo's become Europe's largest company in October, with a market valuation that outstrips Denmark's total GDP. Converting its profits from dollars pushes up the value of Denmark's krona and has allowed the country's central bank to keep rates low. Looking ahead though, the drug's rise could have wider implications. Competition is booming as rival firms fight for a piece of the pie. A pie that Barclays says could be worth $200 billion by the end of the decade. Analysts expect such rapid growth to impact sectors like fitness, food and healthcare, and even ones as diverse as travel and retail. Still, a lot will hinge on the outcome of clinical trials. In 2024, Wagovi and Eli Lilly's Zetbound will be pitted against each other in a trial, with their applications for dementia and addiction also getting put to the test. Novo is also expecting expanded FDA approval in the next six months, after trials showed Wagovi reduced the risk of major cardiac events. That could have major implications for health insurers too. But supply chain constraints will be the company's most immediate concern. Both firms have said they'll ramp up production over the next year, but there are concerns other, over whether they can meet this demand mm. for these drugs. So interesting. Thanks for the overview. Also, pretty remarkable. No one thought at the beginning of 2023 that the best performing stock would be Novo Nordisk and that it's it would wild. completely consume all other stocks in the European markets this completely. year. Taking a look back at the stock 600. I guess, uh, you know, a couple of questions that I have is uh, how, how sustainable mm. these levels of growth are going into coming years. And we hear about more competition yeah. coming to the market so far. The major market leaders are Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, yep. but I wonder to what extent they can keep replicating the performance of 2023 in coming years. Yeah, I mean, it will be hard. It is a very sort of hard path to follow, but these are the market leaders. And, you know, we've got predictions from Barclays saying that Wagovi sales could hit three point, uh, sorry, 7.3 billion next year. That's up from $4.2 billion this year. And uh, similarly, Zetbound could see $2.2 billion in sales. And then we have, have had other players coming to the fore. We've had the likes of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Roche all saying that they want to get into this space. And as we heard from Eli Lilly there, you know, you'd be foolish perhaps in the pharmaceutical industry not to try to, but they will certainly be catching up some way. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to be said for the first mover advantage here, yeah. because already people are sort of locked into the ecosystem yeah. of, of the drugs that are available. What about side effects, Karen? Um, yeah. You and I were just speaking off record. I do have a friend of mine who has been on Zempic. She's lost a lot of weight, but she's physically not eating that mm. much. And because she's not eating, her hair has actually started to fall out. I don't think it's a side effect of the drug, but the fact right. that she's just not eating, getting enough nutrition. Getting nutrition. Is there enough talk about some of the side effects of these drugs I and what happens when you stop taking them? Absolutely. I think that is an area that there is perhaps not enough sort of evidence of coverage of lately. We haven't seen people using these drugs for long enough to see what the long term implications are. But certainly we're seeing results that when people move off the drugs, they are gaining that weight. So mm -hmm. this implies that they're going to be having to use it for a long time. And some of the academics I've spoken to who are doing tests in this area are looking at the impacts on the risk reward system in the brain, because you know that could have implications for whether people can you know, find fulfillment, find enjoyment mm -hmm. in all these different pleasures or yeah. vices, whatever you may call it. Yeah. And for those with potentially depressive tendencies and the like, 
that could have big implications as well yeah, for their behaviors. I've heard that as well. There's sort of this just numbness uh, of sensation that goes along yeah. with it too. So yeah. uh, it definitely does come with caution that there, there are pros and cons as with everything. Absolutely. Karen, thank you so much.